Okay, team, welcome back. I'm Matt, and we're going to crack on with our mill building adventure. So we've now built the stand. What are we going to do? We're going to take it back apart. And that's the wrong size bit. So if you watch my last video, this here, this is my electronics cabinet. Uh, it's going to be a cabinet, at the moment it's a board. Uh, and I think that to get some stuff off my floor, to get some progress happening on the mill, so I can try and tune the motors and see how EtherCAD actually works on Linux and all that other kind of jazz, I need to get this going so that I can get power to certain elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark out all the holes for all the locations and everything. We're going to drill them. We're going to put the stuff on this board. And then we're going to add some other ancillary items uh, around the mill, like the, the water cooling radiator and uh, the, the water loop and bits and pieces like that. Let's crack on. So this isn't working out as well as I wanted it to. This pen pencil thing isn't showing up as well that I was hoping it would uh, on this form plow, this dark reflective surface. This is a, a tough carbon marking pencil. The grey in it is a graphite thing. The other colours seem to be a bit of a wax blend so it doesn't really stick too well to this material. Uh, and then the, the line gets quite thick um, which is rather frustrating because it's not it's not accurate enough for what I was hoping it would be. So I'm going to pause this here and go away, come up with a new plan, and then come back and give it a go. This is my solution. Uh, it cost me $4 to get this printed. It was A0 size, so it's considerably larger than here. I chopped it down, left some reference points into the square edges at both ends, and then uh, give myself plenty of area to tape. So all I want to do now is find the holes with the drill and drill. I forgot something. All right, Swiss cheese boards on. Let's add some parts to it.
All right, with all the bits down there, it's uh, it's actually looking pretty good right now. I'm pretty happy with that. Had a minor issue with the VFD here. This is a E550 TAC 2S, so it's two phase or single phase, not three phase. Uh, 0055L, so it's a 5.5 kilowatt um, spin, uh, VFD for the 4.2 kilowatt spindle. Uh, I use the E. 500 manual to find the sizes for it, which is what I was told to do by the supplier. Uh, and you can see these holes. You can see a hole here, you can't see the hole there. You can see this hole down here. There's another one over here. Uh, and that is the original mounting holes um, from the drawings that I got for, for this uh, VFD. It's a little bit smaller uh, than what I was told. And that's actually kind of disappointing because, you know, I had to read all the holes and everything else. I'm going to have to fire out this hole here a little bit on the right line react just because uh, I can't drill everything perfectly. Uh, but everything else on this whole board here lines up, so I'm pretty happy about that. So what I'm going to do next is go through and just add the pneumatic tubes. You can see this one here is already in. Um, because it's such a tight distance between there and there, what I've got to do is cut the tube to size, um, put it in here, remove this, put it in there, and then put the whole thing back together. Uh, you'll see how that works in a minute. Um, up here, this one, these two both run on the same... Uh, pressure, so they share the one regulator. Uh, everything else runs on a different pressure, so they're all on different regs. Uh, it's a lot of regs, it's a lot of solenoids, but oh, well, that's what you got to do. I might even put a fourth or fifth solenoid down here later on for you know, other things. Actually, before I go, I'm assuming you're going to know what these solenoids are. I'm assuming you're going to want to know what this uh, pneumatic system does. Uh, so this one here opens and closes the spindle. Um, between the rest of them, we have a, a purge air for when the the ATC or the tool holders out. We have a sealing air for when the spindle's running, and then we have uh, this one set aside to be able to run an air blast system. Um, so that's that's what I've got here pneumatic wise. Uh, let's get it wide, or let's get it plumbed. All right, we'll install the rest of the lines when the, uh, the top gets put on, so I can route them properly. I seem to put an inlet connector on here, so I'll probably just have a JIST uh, thing coming over here. Uh, and then the rest of them will, will go up onto the top, just to power everything. So huge amounts of this build I put a lot of time and effort into, and other parts I haven't. So this is one of the latter. The, uh, I'm going for the holes with a, the right size so that, you know, a screw would fit in there without having to you know, have any alignment issues. But it turns out that I made them a little bit too big and the heads fit through, which means I need to put some washers on the back of it. I didn't have any washers of the right size. So I made some out of an aluminium strip. And look, they're janky, but they appropriately cover the holes. I'll make sure they're all aligned so it looks nice. Well, as nice as four square washers on the back of the radiator will look. So for my water cooling reservoir, I found the, uh, the best solution is these, what is it, 20 litre? I say 10 litre water can, um, just from a camping shop. Um, they're pretty cheap. They've got a nice big wide mouth, so you can get a pump or lines and everything, bits and pieces in there. Uh, the problem is that it's you know, not the best amount. There's no tabs or anything on them. So I just made up a little couple of aluminium brackets. I'm just going to bolt down on the side here. The reservoir will go over like that, and then I'll have a strap that will come through the top. And it'll just hold it all in place and keep it nice and secure. Get easy access between the radiator and the, uh, the mouth of the, the reservoir, and then that's also where I'll have the pump. Alternate option 
is I could open up this line here and have a pump sticking out there that feeds it up and then a return up in here. Either way, plenty of things we can do. Nice and cheap and too easy. Still don't like woodwork, but sometimes, sometimes it's just so simple. It's almost enjoyable. I say almost because it's not. I've personally made worse things, so I'll accept it. Okay, so at this point, things are a little bit interesting. Nothing to do with the project and everything to do with my career and my personal life. The last clip you saw was filmed on 24th of October, 2021. It's now January, 2022, and in the interluding months, I've finished the mill, packed it up, put it in storage, and moved overseas. The whole moving overseas thing really compressed the mill build timeframe and hindered my ability to take footage of it. So I do have footage of some other bits of the build, but it's nowhere near as detailed as I was expecting, and it kind of ends abruptly as the time pressure ramps up. Please forgive me for that. I did bring some of the mill with me though, and as it's relevant to this video, check out my electronics board. I'm not going to go through it in detail right now, but it is Ethicat modules powered by Linux CNC, and it caused a few headaches to get set up. I managed to get some help from this guy named Rod to get it going. There's a card to his channel here, but I figured it deserves its own video so others can learn from our mistakes. The lights flash at least. See you all in the next one, and thanks for watching.